Welcome back to the Ohio Bobcats Coaches Show with Jeff Bowles. I'm Justin Holbrock. Good to have you back, Coach. Good to be here, Justin. All right, so a seven-point win over Kent State on Saturday. Four different players scored more than 15 points. What made it possible to get that many people going on offense? Yeah, I thought we did a great job of sharing the basketball, um, rebounding the basketball, and you know when the ball moved and, and you make shots, get assists. And all year long, we've been you know really good at, at, at you know, sharing the basketball, and, and uh, that, you know that, that night we were on. A big reason for those points were free throw attempts. You guys had 32 of them, 25 you made. Other than them fouling late and trying to get back in the game, what took you guys to the foul line? Yeah, that was a big part of it, being aggressive. Like throwing the ball inside, you know, trying to get post feeds, driving the basketball into the paint. Mm. And, you know, there's three different ways to score. You know, field goals, three-point field goals, and, and free throws. And if, if you're getting to the free throw line, you're being aggressive. And obviously that, you know, puts them in foul trouble, gives you extra po points. Hey, hey, hey. You guys gave up a season high 87 of them a couple weeks ago. It helps that they made 17 threes in that game. They only made eight in the game on Saturday. You guys forced 13 turnovers. What was working on defense? Yeah, our, our ball pressure and our gap help wasn't near what it needed to be in game one. Mm -hmm. Game two, we made some adjustments and, and actually did that. Didn't give them as many open looks and you know it showed in the final score. One of the other things that showed was Jason Preston. Obviously, another good scoring game, 18 points, but 10 assists and no turnovers. To have that consistency the whole year from a freshman, what does that say about his play? I know we talked about it weeks past, but it, it stayed the same. Yeah, he, he's really grown throughout the course of the year, and we asked him to do, a, to do a lot. Played 40 minutes, have zero turnovers. The, the amount of, you know, he handles the basketball, makes decisions. You know, just a phenomenal performance on his part. Another thing we talked about was needing bench points and needing those guys to step up against good teams. And you had that. London McDay, he had 16 points. You guys outscored their bench by 10. Uh, that's the difference in the game right there. What did you see from London that you liked and, and how aggressive was he? In that? Yeah, he was really aggressive. And, and you know, a lot, a lot of times he you know, doesn't have a lot of confidence sometimes in his shot. Mm. But our, our teammates are telling, his teammates are telling him, hey, shoot the ball when you're open. And you know, he was over, his mid-range game was really good. And, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's a winner. Mm. You know, he makes game when he plays. He dove in a ball, got some extra possessions for us, and that's invaluable. We touched on it a little bit, but it was senior day for Jordan Dardis and Sylvester. So what does that kind of day mean? You were in that position before you were once a senior. What, what goes into a day like that? And not only just playing in that game, but winning that game. Yeah, I mean, I remember my senior day. I was on crutches, yeah. you know, my third torn ACL. Yeah. Five guys had B-O-A-L-S on their chest, and you know it's, it's something you always remember. And yeah. to, to give them a win and go out the way and the ovation that they got, you know, all-time leading three-point field goals made in the history of Ohio University. Sylvester came in as a fifth year. Yeah. Those guys are giving a lot to the program. Let's get to the game last night. You guys put up 50 in the first half against Akron, but only 17 in the second half. What changed between the first and second half? Yeah, I think you know they, they, they changed their ball screen coverage, you know, for Jason Preston. And if you go back and look at it, I watched it again this morning. And you know, we, we missed probably seven layups in the second half, missed mm -hmm. three front ends of one and one. And in games like that, you know, those are valuable possessions. And uh, first half we had two turnovers, second half we had 13 turnovers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those turnovers led to easy points for them. And you know, give them credit. You know, they were, they were playing for a championship and, and uh, you know, we led 31 minutes of the game but couldn't yeah. close it out. How much of that is exhaustion, missing layups and, and trying to get back on defense after having such a great first half? Because you're without Jordan Dardis to start the game, Ben Vanderplas goes down with an ankle injury, so it seems like things kind of changed at that moment. Yeah, it was, it was weird. You know, Mason McMurray was uh, no, not feeling well before the game, so yeah. he, he didn't dress. Jordan Dardis you know, sprained his ankle on Sunday in practice, he didn't dress. And then Lennon McDay was cramping throughout the course of the game. Yeah. Sylvester sprained his ankle, uh, Ben sprained his ankle. So just a weird combination, and obviously in a, in a game like that with the energy you expend, you know, I, I thought we uh, you know, played on fumes towards the end. How does that affect the game when you don't have Jordy out there? Yeah, a lot, you know, because he, he's a guy, anytime he catches the basketball, he, he's a threat to score. Mm -hmm. And you have to guard him out there, which, you know, once you guard him, it creates space for the post guys as well. Mm. And, you know, they can't just sag in, you know, uh, on drives because he's a threat every time he shoots it. On the other side of the token, scoring 50 points in one half, that's about as good of basketball as you can play. And doing that without Jordan Dardis, what does that say about the effort of the team to do that on the road against now the Max Best team? Yeah, if you look at you know Ben Sylvester and um, jo uh, Jason, you know they, they really carried us in that first half. And mm -hmm. Jason was able to get downhill a lot on those ball screens. You know, Vess was scoring inside, Ben Vanderplas was scoring. Right. And, you know, I think when Ben 
tweaked his ankle right around the 11 minute mark. I think that really changed the complexion of the game for us. Other than that, to jump out on the road, we talked about that before, that to win the MAC tournament, you're going to have to win on the road. And you guys played pretty well at the beginning there, didn't get the job done in the end. But what, what changed to, to do so well in those first 20 minutes? Yeah, our, our mindset was good. The energy level was good. The preparation was really good. And, and we've been playing well. And you know, to go in that atmosphere, you, you have to do all the little things. You got to make those you know, one-on-one free throws. You got to make your layups. You, know, you can't turn the ball over, and we we didn't we did all that and didn't do that in the first half. Second half was a different story, and it was very similar to Game One, where they, you know, got out to a big lead in right. the first half, and then we came back in the second half. So going to that Miami game, you only have a couple days off before you play them. What can you do in that short time frame before the MAC tournament? Yeah, you know, this time of year, March, you know, uh, we're we're more so I think than most banged up, bump bruised. Yeah. You know, so today's a big rehab treatment day. Uh, we'll be, go very light, if mm -hmm. anything at all. We'll watch film, maybe walk through some of their plays, and then uh, you know, try to get our guys off their feet. All right, Coach, a play that we're going to break down this week, something that we have not done yet. It's an inbounds play, and it's a big one. You guys are up by five with 34 seconds left. Kent State trying to get back into the game, and this was a pretty big play. So before we play this, just walk me through what we're seeing here. Yeah, so obviously you always look at time and score. You know, so there's 34 seconds left in the game. We're, we're up five, 27 on the shot clock. They're probably going to have to foul you. Mm -hmm. They don't want to run the you know clock down that low. So number one, we got to get the ball in. And if you look at it, we still have two timeouts left. You know that's one of the things we look at. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it comes close to a five-second call, I can call timeout. Jason can call timeout. And then we want to make sure we get the ball in. So we do a one-four high alignment here, mm -hmm. just to try to space the guys out. London makes a great play. This wasn't even the look. You know, the, this is the first look out of a couple options. Mm -hmm. But we were really just trying to get the ball in gotcha. you know, to get fouled, not really expecting that we're going to get a layup. So London does a great job setting his man up, jab, step hard like he's going off a screen, goes right to the rim, and Jason makes a great pass, uncontested layup. You know, that, that's big because it extends the lead to seven. Mm -hmm. Now it's a three-possession game as opposed to a two-possession game. I'm going to get this back to when you guys had four at the line. So say London's not open on that first read right there. What is some of the other options that you mentioned? Yeah, so normally what, what we'll do is London will cut down here, uh -huh. and then we have Jordan coming off a stagger screen by our four and our five. Okay. So Jason will end up entering the ball here. Gotcha. Okay, so that's a look that we can do. And then once he cuts through here, the two will catch it right here. JP will enter, enter here. And then we'll set a diagonal back screen coming off this way for another layup opportunity as well. And then if that's not there, it'll be a screen in for the three man coming off. Two's got the ball, mm. four's posting. So you got three different looks off this play, but the biggest thing is to get the ball in bounds with 34 seconds to go. You obviously have a lot of options when you run an inbounds play like that. You can just decide, hey, we're just gonna dump it off and get fouled. What was it about this look that you thought might work to lead to a layup? Or did you just think, let's get the ball in and see what happens? Yeah, the biggest thing is we want to space them out and not allow them to trap easily. Mm -hmm. So we went our four high look. And then, you know, we didn't think that this option would be as easy as it was. But the, the big key, you know, is London set his man up, jabbed hard this way, and then cut right to the rim. So obviously he gets that layup, then you guys end up going up by, at that point, seven. And that's pretty much the game. And that's a win for the Bobcats on senior day. Yeah, huge, huge bucket right there. Great win for us. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll keep that going. So, Coach, the MAC basketball tournament is now less than a week away. Obviously, you're focused on beating Miami Friday, but how do you prepare your team to play four games in six days to hopefully win the MAC championship on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we're in that situation. Yeah. And this is the exciting time of year, March Madness. I mean, there's nothing better in, in college basketball. And, you know, I tell our guys all the time, I've been fortunate enough as a player and as a coach to, to see your name pop up on Selection Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there's no better feeling. Uh, than, than seeing that and in, in, in playing in the NCAA tournament. So obviously we, we play Miami on Friday, huge game, rivalry game, and uh, that'll really dictate the seeding, you know, whether we win, lose. Sure. And then, you know, once you do that, you play Monday, home site, uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. and then, you know, get up to Cleveland. And, you know, Bobcat Nation is, is huge in Northeast Ohio. Oh, so yeah. hopefully we get up there, get all the Bobcats out and uh, support us. You mentioned that you've been there before. What do you do to get the guys maybe mentally and physically prepared in this case for a stretch where you would have to win four games in six days? Yeah, the good thing is you played all these teams. So the, sure. the preparation is going to be a little bit easier because, you know, you have game film to look at. Right. And at this time of year, it's about being fresh as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to go out and practice a lot hard. 
you know, it's more maintenance, tweak some things, you know, know your game plan, how you're going to guard certain actions, what you want to run offensively. And then, you know, it's like 40 minutes. This is money time. It's, it's March, you know, time to play. Best time of the year, March Madness. Thanks so much, Coach. All right, guys, that's it for Coach Bowles and myself. We'll see you next week.